Thank you all for being here. This week, I'm gonna go back to the 911 and do more assembly and fix a few things along the way. <sighs> Garage time. <laughs> This may be a can of worms, but this shaft is really not spinning very well. It's very, very tight and it's gritty. So because this car was stored in the desert for so long and had no hood on it, I think a lot of dust and debris has just managed its way in here. So I think the only option is to just pull the shaft out, check the bearings, replace whatever's damaged and put it back together. This end also has a lot of dust and debris in there. So I'm gonna start by pulling those circlips out. Let's see if these pliers can get a bite into that ring, get it off. Okay, that has moved the shaft in or out in this case. I'm trying to remove it, but I might have to create a puller from the inside to really extract it because I don't want to keep hammering on this too much. So I cut this tubing and I have these old washers to create my own puller. I was going to use the thread on the end of the steering shaft to tighten down on the conduit and pull the shaft out. Well, come to find out, I don't have the nut that goes on the steering shaft. You know, this car, this car never came with a steering wheel, didn't have a nut on or anything. So I uh, went to the store and apparently it's an odd size. It's M18 by 1.5. You know, they had M20, they had M16, but there's no M18. So I ordered that nut. I think it'll be here tonight. So I'm gonna move on to the fuel lines. I'm gonna jack up the car and go underneath and try to install those stainless fuel lines I made a few weeks ago and try to get them through the tunnel. See how difficult that might be. I just checked the camera. That's about a six minute process to lift the car probably 28 inches off the ground, safe enough to go underneath it. I do use a ratchet strap on one of the tires to make sure it doesn't roll off. And I also have tire chocks on the back. So it's really secure. I'm gonna go underneath now and double check the fuel line length. Make sure the length's okay. And then I'm gonna try to feed it through. Okay, I managed to get the fuel line in and it's poking out on both sides, but I'm not done yet. Here's where it exits from the front and this uh, green tape really helped visualize it through the tunnel. It did get hung up on a few spots, but the problem I'm having now is the fitting is buried somewhere in the tunnel. So I need to slide the fitting up to the front, see if it's gonna fit. All right, these fuel lines are correct length. You know I made these fuel lines without having the car here. The car was 
in storage waiting for the paint to dry. But I used the factory lines and I did some careful measurements before I took them out. So the length is correct. This portion is the rear. It is located directly underneath the torsion tube. And then the front <coughs> is this section and it's located as close as possible to the footwell. So I can get a wrench in there, but I know that the tight, the spacing is tight. So it's not to the point where I can't put some more fuel fittings on here. So this is a uh, stainless fuel line. I made it myself. If you want to see that video, click the link right here. And I've also cut some regular fuel tubing. This is standard uh, rubber fuel tubing and I slid it so it is able to go over the tubing. Like so, and, and this is designed to protect the tubing inside the tunnel. There are a few tight spots where it might rub or it could wear through. Now the stainless is pretty tough, but I still don't want it to rattle around. There's one fitting on that side. And then there's this fitting on this side. So it went all the way through. Definitely learned some lessons in getting this job done, but it wasn't that bad once you got the technique. I gotta put the rubber on first before I put it in its final position. Okay, the fuel lines are in. It was a little bit of a challenge. I got a few tips for you guys if you're gonna be doing this uh, replacement. And I definitely recommend, remember these are the plastic nylon lines. I definitely recommend getting rid of those. They will crack and fill your interior up with gas. The tips I have for you guys is it's much easier to fish the line through if it doesn't have fittings. The original lines didn't have fittings either. So I use the flared fittings on both sides because I think they're more secure, but it does make it harder to get it through the tunnel. And I kind of overthought it uh, as I was trying to get that sleeve to go through the tunnel obstructions. And it really is the most simple thing to do is to put the ball bearing on the end, tape it on and just ram it through. But you can help put your fingers in the tunnel and, and lift it past some of the obstacles. The biggest obstacle I found was the seat belt brackets on the inside. They're bulky and they are a hard stop. So once you get past the seat brackets, the seat belt brackets, it really goes in pretty easy. 
The other tip I have for you guys is not to use a really heavy wall tubing. I use stainless steel, it's pretty tough, and it's not a straight shot. When you go from the, the bulkhead hole in the rear and the bulkhead hole in the front, it's definitely curvy. So you can't have a super thick wall tubing because you won't be able to get it in. It has to bend and flex. Stainless required a little bit of force. Uh, it was nice, I was able to tap on the end of it with a rubber hammer, and it didn't flex the tube or get it completely out of whack, but I wouldn't go any thicker than that. And then the other tip is, you know, try not to put too many fittings on the end. That was one of my goals all along, is not to make too many restrictions in the fuel tubing. I just think the in-tank fuel pump is less restrictions, better uh, fuel flow, and more reliability. So you don't want to just keep bulking up fittings trying to get it all to clear. So that's why I, I kept it as tidy as I could. I did get the uh, nut now for the steering column, so I'm going to go back to that steering shaft, see if we can get it pulled out. Little trial and error there. I didn't damage anything. Um, this is the bearing that is in the trunk area and I can't even move it with my fingers. This one's the problem. It's uh, sealed on one side, open on the other side and it's just got a lot of dust in it. Uh, and then this one is kind of the same thing. A lot of dried grease, a little bit of dust in it but it spins really nice. So this one is a little bit of a unique bearing. I think I'm gonna try to reuse this one. This one is just a standard bearing. I already ordered it when I ordered the nuts from McMaster Car. So I'll leave the part number for this one down below. There's no point in trying to clean this one. It's only like a $6 bearing. This one I think is like 75 through Porsche. I don't know if there's a generic equivalent to this one, but I'm just gonna fix it up. Here's the new bearing. I haven't fully pressed it on the shaft yet. I think I'm gonna push it in the housing instead, but it's the correct size. It fits in the right place. And uh, the only difference here is this one's double shielded which is only better than non-shielded. This bearing has been soaking in gasoline and I've just been cleaning it out with this paper towel till it, it doesn't leave any dirt on the towel. And it's really spinning pretty nice. It's gonna be good as new, I hope. This bearing doesn't get a lot of rotations. It's just a steering wheel, but I've got it cleaned up pretty well. So there's not gas in it anymore. I've, uh, I was wearing gloves when I, when I was doing the gas. This is WD-40. So there's no gritty sounds, no nothing. It's uh, coming off the towel pretty clean. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on this and then reinstall it in the car. Thank you. 
Okay, a quick pause here while I continue to work on the steering rack connection. I wanna tell you about a small change happening to the channel. Actually, nothing is changing about the Saturday show. I am always going to include my weekly progress on either the 911 or the 356 and show you what gets done in real time, the good and the bad. The change is going to be a potentially a weekly video that highlights something that I might have done in the past. So these are bite-sized videos that solve a specific problem. Maybe someone's looking for how to build a roll cage, but they don't wanna search over three or four different videos. So I'm gonna repackage that into a small video that solves a problem and helps my audience. Now, maybe it's someone who hasn't discovered it yet, and that's kind of what these videos will do. It's going to allow new people to discover the content and hopefully help them solve their problem. You know, I really appreciate each and every one of you that is here supporting the channel and watching on a weekly basis, but sometimes the way YouTube works, it's difficult to capture their attention if the problem is spread out over multiple videos. So I'm gonna be trying some new things. If you see some content that looks like I'm going backwards or it looks like you've already seen it, that might be the case. So I wanted you to know first that you should see some changes, but everything on Saturday will remain the same. And thank you so much for subscribing and coming along with me on this journey. I hope you've gotten some value out of it. I hope you, you've seen some of the progress done on this car, and I hope you continue to watch in the future. I think it's about to get more exciting as we get this thing close to driving. That's pretty smooth. This shaft here connects the uh, steering column output to the steering rack. And this has been painted. The swivel joints are really nice. I didn't do much to restore this. And it looks to me like it's completely symmetrical and doesn't matter which end goes where. There are some splines on here on both. There's lots of splines in the whole system. So eventually the steering wheel needs to be lined up with the tires, but there's a lot of opportunity to do that with the steering wheel hub and also the tie rod ends. So I'm just gonna install this wherever it fits and go on from there. In a previous episode, I've already reconditioned this bearing and painted this shaft as well. This is where it attaches to the steering rack with a rubber coupling. Same thing, it has to follow the key in here. This opening has to be where the bolt passes through. So just line it up, push it on. This is the new rubber coupler from URO, and it should go in exactly the same as the old one. I've already checked the measurements. The only thing I'm missing are the lock tabs, which I need to order new from, probably from Porsche. Also, now is a good time not to forget to put this piece in. This is just a dust cover. I'm just cleaning it up with some Simple Green, and this is the original part, not in bad shape. I guess the sun didn't reach that far down into this car. It took me a few attempts to get the assembly sequence down, but I think I got it. This joint gets supported by a bracket right here, which I need to go grab. I have that painted. And then that's the last piece you put on. This boot covers the joint right where that steering coupler is. So it's important to tighten these nuts before you put the steering coupler on. And that's what I was trying to figure out the orientation for. So that's on there now. Everything is finger tight at the moment because I'm gonna put some lock tabs on there and do the proper torque on this later. I don't have the factory lock tabs, you can only use them once. So for now, I'm just gonna tighten everything by hand. I'm gonna add the bolts that go right here, 
put that bracket back on and then this should be done at least for now. I have this piece too. This is the original piece that's heavily sun damaged. Remember this car was left out for dead in the desert. So the sun was beating on this because there was no hood on the car. This part goes like this. And it does fit pretty well. It just looks bad. Now, I think I might go back and paint this. Um, I'll use epoxy primer and then probably paint it black. I mean, I could paint it yellow, but uh, it's probably wise to put this on. If you leave this off, the, you could just leave it like this, but the damage is, the, or the risk is you get a piece of wiring stuck in here or you get some luggage or whatever, your wife's purse in here and it gets tangled up in the steering and then you're in trouble. So even though this is um, extra work, I think it's worthwhile putting it back on just for safety. All right, guys, look at that. Finally have a steering wheel in place and there is really no play, it's super rigid. It's tight, no real play in it at all. So really uh, excited about that. I'm not sure this is gonna be the steering wheel of choice. I feel like it's a little small. That's not the correct hardware. Um, I do have another wheel. Let me show you that one. Okay, this second wheel is larger and has a little bit more of a dish to it. So you can see the difference in size. I know the Momo is like a 350, and I think that the Lacera is like, um, I don't know, 370. It's, you know, probably if I was to hold it in line there, you can see the difference on my left hand. It's probably at least an inch difference. So I'd call it 25 millimeters. Maybe it's a 380, somewhere in that range. So I don't have the adapter for this one. I would need to make a custom adapter and then Mark gave me a really cool horn button that I'd like to use for either wheel. But uh, that's what I have right now. This is just something to use to drive the car. And then this kind of stuff to me is just jewelry. You know, you can always replace this stuff. Certainly you want it to be in the right driving position. So I feel like this one being dished out might work a little better, but I won't know until I get the pedals and the seat in. So that's why I have two. So another exciting day, you know, this is happening. The car is going together. I got a steering wheel, I got the steering attached to the tires, and it feels really nice. I got the fuel lines in, I'm gonna be working on the brake line soon. Electrical will probably go in tomorrow. I just won't be able to get it in today's video. But check back next week, more good stuff to come. Thank you again for your understanding and following this journey. And if you're interested in either a t-shirt or supporting me by buying the course, I offer a TIG welding course that's gonna help you level up your TIG welding, whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or advanced. I'm gonna share with you all the tricks that I used on this car. So please check that out. Here's the link in the description below. Have a good weekend, guys.